Daniel, you're acting weird. Why are you refusing it so much? It's not like I'm refusing it. I'm just saying there's no meaning. No meaning? Why? Because, you know, you can't go sightseeing here. You're just going to look into my room and see how messy it is. Or look in my fridge and see what I'm eating. And check everything, right? You don't have time to do touristy things like eating local food or seeing the famous tower. I'm sure that's how it's going to be. I'll just end up cleaning your room, doing laundry and cooking. At best, I'll go shopping for dinner. I could at least stock the fridge. See? You're going to waste money on transportation to come here to do that. I'm making a good living in my own way. Don't worry. I'm an adult too, you know. But if I go from Friday night, I can get all that stuff taken care of on Saturday. Then on Sunday, we can walk around the town and go home at night. I'd love to do something date-like once in a while. You'd have a hard time if we had a busy weekend like that. It's not like you have nothing to do. I'm thinking about you. Thanks for your concern. But it's not like I visit you every week, so it's not tough for me. Yes, it is. Of course it's tough. If you go to work on Monday in that condition, I'm sure you'll make a mistake. And if you do, you'll cause trouble for everyone around you. I don't want you to make a mistake at work and get fired or have your salary lowered. I don't want you to have to go through that. It's for your own good. You're even thinking about that? So, does that mean it's too hard for you to come over here? No, no, that's a different story. I deserve to have a hard time, and I'm relieved to be home. I can relax. And I get to do nothing on the weekends. I get to restore my energy. It's advantageous for me. It's not the same as when you come over here. Is that so? Something's weird. There's nothing strange about it. It's natural. There's a big difference between going back to our sweet home and being at a place where I'm working alone. This is a temporary home. But this home is a rent too. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not talking about renting or owning a house. It's our home. A place for both of us. A place to go home. But here is a temporary place, so I don't feel at home. Hmm, I feel like I understand, but not really. Is that okay? Of course, it's fine. Anyway, you prefer to come back home, then I go visit you even if it costs money. That's what I mean. Besides, I heard from my colleague that if we work far from home and when we want to go back to our home, the transportation fee will be deductible as long as we file a tax return. So it's definitely a better deal, right? I didn't know that. Well then, it's better for you to come back. I mean, if you had said that from the beginning, I would have been convinced right away. Why have you been telling me all those weird logic or reason? I thought you knew too. It's not weird at all to me. Well, I don't know, but I get it. What's that? Which is it? I don't understand you. I don't know what you're thinking, but I understand that it's not strange to you. I don't understand completely, but if you insist, I won't ask you anymore. I'm glad you understand. This is definitely the best way. I've told you many times that I'd visit you, but every time you always have some weird reason or logic and refuse me. I've been a little worried about it. I wondered why you were so reluctant. Isn't that kind of weird? I was actually a little worried that you might have a girlfriend there. If you have a reason for wanting to use your deductible for transportation, that makes sense. You should have told me earlier. Wait a minute. You suspected me of cheating on you? That's stupid. There's no way I would do something like that. Right. You were thinking about the family. 
I'm sorry I suspected you for even a second. There's no need to apologize. If you understand, that's fine. Don't worry about that kind of thing anymore. Yeah, I love you so much. I can't wait to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you when you get back. Me too. Well, good night. Now one problem is solved, but another one came up. Before Daniel went off to work away from home, we were considering buying an apartment. But since he left, we haven't talked about it at all. I wanted to discuss what we should do, so I asked him about it, but it turned into a fight. Daniel, do you have any idea which place you want to live? I'm asking this because I wanted to get ready to buy an apartment. I wanted to decide on our place to live. That's not something you should be asking me when I'm working away from home. Why do you always get so ahead of yourself? Why don't we look for a place together when I get back? But then, I'll have to wait for another year? Until you finish your work there? I'm not even allowed to talk about it. You could at least tell me where you want to live. I didn't say like that. This assignment was originally supposed to be for three years. But there's a chance to be extended, depending on how things go at work. I can't decide to buy an apartment when I don't know what's going to happen. I'm worried too, you know. But even if we can't decide now, why don't we start thinking about it? At least, decide where we're going to live. Then, when you finish working there, we can make a move right away. I'm not talking about buying it right now. I just want to discuss about it. Is that a no too? No, I don't know when I finish. You don't know what the real estate status will be at that time. There is a possibility that land price in the city you want to live in might go up drastically. That's a waste of money. If that's the case, it's better not to make such a decision in the first place. First of all, we have to think about whether it's better to rent or own a house. Wait, what do you mean? Before you left, you said you wanted an apartment too, right? Did you change your mind? It's going to be our property. It's not like I changed my mind. I mean, I'm put off by your enthusiasm for buying an apartment. I was thinking that we don't have to rush. Why do you say that? Because if we are thinking of buying an apartment, we don't necessarily have to get it. At the very least, we need to gather information and save up some money. I think it's too late to start when you suddenly want it. We need a plan when we think about the finance, right? You know what? You're always so forward with your life planning, and I'm always being pushed around. That's what I don't like. I don't feel good, you know. What? I didn't mean it like that. Did I really push you around that much? You're always like that. You've been pushing me around like you're doing right now. You're always taking things in the direction you want them to go. That's selfish, isn't it? No, I'm not. I'm thinking about us. I always want to be happy together with you, Daniel. You didn't come along with me to this town. And you're trying to go ahead with your plan to buy an apartment just because you want one. Isn't that awful? Maybe you make more money than me. And you might think it's stupid plan to quit your job and follow me. Then why don't you give something else up for me? How terrible. Is that how you thought? I don't know how to say, but I feel like you don't respect me. That's not true. But if you felt so, I must have done something wrong in the way I tell you 
or the way I talk to you. I'm sorry. You're not that enthusiastic about buying an apartment, right? I'm sorry for trying to force you to go through with it. Before I get into it or not, you're too forward. That's what I don't like about It's not just about the apartment. You want to take over the conversation, right? You think I'm mad because of a childish reason like that? You've got to be kidding me. You think I'm stupid, don't you? No, I'm sorry. I don't understand why you're mad. Why is it? I didn't say anything difficult, did I? I'm saying you shouldn't proceed on your own. When you decide on something or do something, you have to hear my opinion and feelings before taking action. Why do I have to tell you? Understood. I'll do that from next time. After this message, he started to take over the conversation and his male, chauvinistic comments began to stand out. I had a bad feeling about this because he had been so nice to me, but he suddenly changed. It was clearly someone else's effect, and if it had been a woman, I could see a trouble coming up. I was thinking about it all by myself, but it was a few months later that my bad premonition came true. I'm sorry I haven't been able to spend time with you. I'll be home early next Friday, so let's go eat out. The restaurant you mentioned the other day sounds good. Let's go there. Kate, what's wrong? Nothing. You just sent to the wrong person. What's going on? No, it's not what you think. Don't get it wrong. She's my colleague at work, Kate. We were planning to go out for dinner since it was a tough week. There's nothing personal. Will you understand? But last time, you said that your colleague are all men. It's different from what you said. Besides, would you say, I can be home early when you ask a woman out to dinner? You know, you only notice what I don't want you to notice. Stop using your annoying skills. I told you not to worry. You were cheating on me. That's why you didn't want me there. So that's what was happening. Now it all makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Bingo. I was cheating on you. I'm working my ass off too. Is there a problem? Unlike you, Kate is a super nice girl who stands up for me. She's not selfish. She puts me first in everything she does. She listens to me when I tell her how hard I'm working. Unlike you, she's not condescending. She cooks and takes care of the house. When have I ever been condescending? I never say something like that. I mean, when did I say? I can tell by your attitude. The attitude. I work too, but I'm doing all this housework ish attitude. You should notice that. That's not true. It's not right for you to say that. When I came home tired, I often didn't cook, did I? Remember when I said, sorry, I bought some food today? I never did something condescending, did I? Really? Well, I felt so. You were giving me a bad vibe. Maybe that girl Kate told you something about me. She kept telling you bad things about working wives and you believed her. You're so naive. You've got to be kidding me. Kate 
is not that kind of woman. She works to support her sick parents and earn money for her brother's tuition. There aren't any girls like that nowadays. Daniel, do you believe that? Of course I do. And like you, she doesn't work just for herself. She's a good girl, isn't she? I'm not just working for me. I'm working for both of us. I don't know if I can believe that. You can't believe me, but you can believe this girl? I think it's very suspicious. But I did my best to save up the down payment for our future apartment. You didn't put any money in our shared savings account, though. I never once urged you to save money either, did I? I have put in at least $2,000 in savings. Are you making fun of me? That's enough. I can't talk to you. I hate your attitude, so it's only natural that I cheat on you. We're getting divorced. I'll take half of your property, $150,000. Understood? Give me a break. The next week, I received a response regarding the divorce, so I turned it in. It all happened so suddenly. I didn't really feel the end, but being mentioned by my parents and friends, I could finally feel the sadness and loss. I moved out of my room and went to live near my work. One day, I received a message from Daniel. Hey, answer the phone. Are you kidding me? What is that $2,000 you transferred? We had a shared bank account for the apartment purchase, right? I returned the money you transferred into that account. You put $2,000, right? $2,000 is not enough. I told you I'd get $150,000 for the half of the savings and property division, right? I know you had a fund of $300,000 to buy an apartment. Now that we're divorced, we have to split it 50-50 as property division. So transfer the $150,000 to me. Aren't you misunderstanding? I don't have any money to give you. You can't play dumb with me. The money you saved when we were married is ours. So even if you saved it yourself, you have to share it with me. You can't pocket the money. Huh? You don't know anything? What? Well, $200,000 is the one I saved when I was single. And my parents gave me $20,000 four times a year, so that makes $80,000. The remaining $20,000 is what I saved after we got married. So, the only joint property is the last $20,000. And the other $280,000? The property before marriage and the property that was given as a gift are called separate estate. They're not subject to property division. That's a lie. That's not what I heard. What are you talking about? It's money I worked so hard to save. Do you have any idea how much I studied investing? I don't know what Kate told you about me. But what I just said is not a lie. By the way... The remaining $20,000 is going to be used as child support. Do you understand? Your property is zero. Did you forget about the agreement? Seriously? What am I supposed to do? I'm broke. She didn't have enough money to start a business, and she was limited on how much loan she can take out. So I borrowed $30,000 on her behalf. Even if her business doesn't succeed, I thought we still have $150,000 from you. 
so I thought I'd have no problem at all. But no! What should I do? I don't know. Don't ask me. I can't help you. Sarah, I'm sorry. My bad. I'll apologize as many times as I have to. I'll get down on my knees or whatever. So, can I pay the child support in installment? Please? Huh? Do you mean you'll pay them in installments later? So you want about $5,000 for now as a division of property? Yes. $5,000 or $3,000 is fine. I'm begging you. I'm having a harder time paying off the debt than I thought. Please, help me. Please, have mercy since we were a family. Huh? Don't be silly. Unlike me, she puts you first, right? Then shouldn't you tell about this to her first? I'm sorry I was so horrible to you at the time. I'm sorry. I was tricked by her. I'm sure you were. When she withdrew the money from my account, she changed her attitude and became cold. Now I lost contact with her. I was an idiot. I'm sorry. No matter how much you apologize, there's no way I can feel sorry for you. You deserve it. You said you couldn't trust me. Why should I do favors for someone who says things like that? I'm not that kind. You desired to take control and made the decision you wanted to make. You'll have to take the responsibility for your own actions until the end. Well then, bye! According to the story from his colleague, Daniel was too busy paying off his debts so he gambled to get a lot of money. It was never going to work out, but as a result of further debts, I assume he had no choice. He quit his job and disappeared. He got what he deserved. On the other hand, I was dating a man who was introduced by my friend and he proposed to me. We are having a fun time talking about marriage preparations and buying an apartment. Hey Haley, you've been avoiding me up until now, but you're definitely going to come to the mom's lunch today. It's Saturday, so you can't use work as an excuse for not going. <laughs> it gets better though. I decided to have it at your house. Won't that be convenient for you? We'll be there at noon sharp. Right now, it looks like 10 people are coming. You can choose whether you want to make the lunch yourself or order out. It doesn't matter to me. Just make sure you get enough. <laughs> oh, and you know what? Actually, I'm in the mood for sushi. There's an amazing sushi place that just opened downtown. Why don't you order from them? Haley, what's going on? Why aren't you at home? Oh, is he? Um, good afternoon. Don't good afternoon me. You had better not be pretending to be out of your house right now. Okay, so I just took a look at the messages you sent me earlier this morning. I'm sorry to tell you like this, but our family is away on vacation today. What? We won't be back until tomorrow. What's the matter with you? You should have told me that way sooner! There are ten hungry mothers waiting at your front door right now, expecting to eat expensive sushi at your lunch party! We left the house at 9 a.m. this morning, and we've been on the road until just now. I didn't even look at my phone until a few moments ago. Come on. Izzy, you can't just invite yourself and ten other people to someone else's house for lunch, much less three hours before you plan to come. What's the big deal? It's Saturday! Yeah, that's why we're going on a little trip as a family today. And for the record, I do sometimes have to go into the office on Saturdays too. 
I've been telling you for a long time, Izzy. You need to give me plenty of advance notice if you want to make any plans involving me. Yeah, but even when I ask you in advance, you always say no! I work on weekends, Izzy. Of course I'm going to say no to a weekday lunch invitation. People who work regular office jobs can't just hop out of an extended lunch whenever they feel like it. You could take time off. It's not that easy. Sorry, Izzy, but we just got our food from the drive-thru, so we're going to get back on the road now. I gotta go. Hey, we're not finished here. I'm sorry, Izzy, but we'll have to talk about this later. Unbelievable. Do you have any idea how much money you cost me? Ugh, good evening, Izzy. I'm sorry, what did you mean? How did I cost you money? The lunch last Saturday. I told all the other moms that we were all invited to your house to eat sushi from the expensive new restaurant. But you completely blew me off and went on vacation with your family. So I got stuck taking them all out to have lunch at that restaurant instead. I had to pay for 10 lunches. Izzy, I think you're missing one very important detail. What detail? You are the one who invited everyone to my house without even talking to me about it in advance. I don't recall ever saying yes to that plan. I didn't even see your message until you were already there. And you're the one who wanted to eat sushi and expected me to pay for it. I think most people would take the complete lack of response as a pretty certain sign that the other person had not gotten the message, don't you? Oh my god, you are so selfish, Haley. Selfish? Me? You really don't get it, do you? Listen, babe, I'm what you call the boss around here. I'm the leader of the mom's club. So all the moms in my circle are my underlings. They do what I say, when I say. Uh, what? You're the boss of the mom's club? Um, yeah, what of it? I don't recall ever joining any club. And second of all, I don't recall ever agreeing to make you my boss. Was there an election or something that I missed? Shut up! I don't need an election to know I'm the boss. It's just the facts. I'm the leader of all the moms in the neighborhood, like it or not. Is that so? Yes, that's so. Got it. The next lunch is going to be at your house for real this time. Next Saturday. Be ready. Sorry, I can't do that day. Excuse me? You told me to give you an advance notice, right? Well, I just did, so make it work. My company's new employees are undergoing a series of training sessions, and I had plans to go and check in on how they're doing on Saturday. Are you kidding? Did you really think I'd buy that excuse? Those training sessions are for important people to deal with. You know, executives, managers, people who matter. What's some loser part-timer like you going to do there? You're just going to be standing around in the back of the room watching everyone else do the real work? <laughs> You'd only be getting in the way. What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm not a part-timer. Wait, really? <laughs> okay, my bad. You're just a temp staffer then. Wrong again. Stop changing the subject. This Saturday, you're going to host the mom's lunch at your house. And this time, you are going to buy us all the sushi we can eat. Do I make myself clear? I just told you, I have work and I can't do it. Oh, and just so you can't get out of your responsibility this time, I'll go ahead and order the sushi for you. You can pay me back later. And yes, you will pay me back every last cent. Okay, well, don't forget that I already told you no. Hey there, Haley. We're having an absolutely lovely sushi lunch at your house right now. Although, I have to admit, it's kind of weird that you're not attending a party at your own house. <laughs> huh? Wait a second. What do you mean you're having a lunch at my house? 
Are you actually in my house right now? How? I locked the doors when I left. Nope. We were able to get inside with no problem at all. It was so nice of you to leave someone here at the house to serve us. <laughs> Who is this old lady? Your mom? Or your mother-in-law? Or just some woman you hired for us? Anyway, this was super nice of you to do. But just because you gave us a servant doesn't mean you're going to get out of paying the $5,500 bill. What the? $5,500? I ordered enough for 20 people. You know, so I could have some leftovers for later. <laughs> I have the old lady here pay for now, but you can pay her back when you get home. Don't keep her waiting, though. I doubt she has that much in her bank account. <laughs> what in the world are you talking about? My husband took my son to the mall to play today, and I've been at work since this morning. So none of us are home, and the house should be empty. Yeah, I figured as much. And that's why you left this old lady here, right? Your mom or mother-in-law or whatever. I did no such thing, Izzy. My mother and my husband's mother. Both of them passed away before we got married. What? Wait. Huh? What are you not getting, Izzy? My entire family is out of the house right now. No one is home. So there shouldn't be any old woman, much less my dead mother or mother-in-law, at the house right now. Hold on. So you're saying that? That woman who went and hid in the back room when we all came into the house? Is that... Oh my god, your mom's a ghost. Oh my god, don't be ridiculous. There is no such thing as ghosts. That woman who's in the house with you, you said you made her pay for the sushi, right? Ghosts don't have money. I mean, they're not even real. What are you, a third grader? Oh, yeah, that does make sense. Wait, so this was a prank? You're awful! You know I'm terrified of ghosts. I can't even watch horror movies. I get so panicked, I, I can't sleep. How could you pull such a cruel prank on me? I wouldn't go to so much trouble to pull some elaborate prank like this on you. But that's beside the point right now. If you're really in my house eating sushi like you say, and some woman let you into my house, then that means someone was trespassing in my house. This is very, very bad. I gotta call the police. Yes, I'm 100% sure that we're in your house. Ugh, you're terrible. If you keep going from prank to prank like this, I'm gonna have a heart attack. How many times do I have to tell you I'm not pulling any pranks on you? You've got some nerve treating me like this on the day I'm celebrating my husband getting a new job. What? Your husband's new job? Yeah, isn't it great? He got scouted by some big shot marketing agency. So this week's mom's lunch is also a party for him. Wait. Is your husband there with you right now? Well, duh, it's his party. Of course he's here. I see. And does your husband's name happen to be Stan? Uh, yeah, but why does that matter? Okay, well then... What? Tell your husband he's fired. Fired? <laughs> what is up with you? He's fired! <laughs> How can you fire him? <laughs> he doesn't even work for you! Actually, he does work for me. Huh? That big shot marketing agency you mentioned earlier, I'm the CEO. What? I told you that I couldn't host a lunch today because my company's new employees were undergoing a training session, didn't I? Your husband is one of the new hires who should be in that training session right about now. But he's never taken any of the training seriously at all. He's been blowing them off, taking long bathroom breaks, using his phone mid-session. And right now, he's absent without leave. I've been trying to contact him since this morning, but he won't answer his phone. Unbelievable. He was having a party to celebrate his new job. Wait, you're not making any sense. My husband was scouted by this company. Why should he have to attend some dumb training session? If he was scouted, doesn't that mean the company really wanted him to join? Trainings are for beginners. Sorry to break it to you, Izzy, but your husband wasn't scouted. What? I don't know what sort of story he's been telling you, but he got hired on as a part-timer, just like all the people at the training session today. 
no, he's a part-timer? He worked hard and proved himself. We have a system where part-timer employees can become full-time regular employees, but he's got to go through the process like everyone else. I'm going to talk to my husband. You wait right there. You were telling the truth. He quit his job at his last company because he could never get along with anyone else there. But he was too embarrassed to admit that he got hired into your company as just a part-timer. So he told me that he got scouted because of his impressive resume. Yeah, that's what happened. And like I just said, your husband's attitude at work was so painfully awful that I don't think he was ever going to make it as a part-timer. I was willing to give him more time to prove himself, but a no-call, no-show is just too much to overlook. I'm going to talk to his HR director right now and get his termination process started. Hey, wait, could you... I'm not... I've got it. How about I make you the boss instead of me? So, come on, please, don't fire my husband. You're gonna make me the boss? Yeah, just think about it. You'll be able to boss around all the other moms now. I would rather comb my hair with a rusty fork than do that. What? Oh, and one more thing. The police have been called. The police?! I told my husband that there was an intruder in our house, so he rushed home from the mall to check on it. And when he got there, he saw our next-door neighbor desperately trying to escape from a window in her own house. Your neighbor? She was really panicked. She said that a bunch of women forced their way into her house and demanded that she pay for their sushi. So my husband let her borrow his phone and she called 911. Oh no. In your defense, our house is in a pretty new development area, so a lot of the houses do look very similar. Oh, don't tell me. I went to your neighbor's house by mistake. Yeah, that seems to be the case. Oh no, this is bad. Oh, like, really, really bad. What should I do now? Given your position, I guess you have no choice but to tell the truth. You got the address wrong and barred into some poor, unsuspecting elderly woman's house with a bunch of your friends. And you made that poor elderly woman pay $5,500 for sushi that you ordered. I think that covers everything that's gone on today. Did I miss anything? I can't believe this. This cannot be happening. Don't you know how that sounds? That makes it sound like we're a bunch of mobsters. Well, if the shoe fits, you've got to do something, Haley. You're an adult, and you got yourself into this mess. So you're just gonna have to get yourself out of it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to work. Nelly, don't go! It seems that an unmarked, silent police car had arrived at the front of our neighbor's house while we were texting each other. And the mom's club was all taken away by the police before they even knew what was happening. After the dust had settled, our neighbor got right to work getting some justice for herself. She sued Izzy and her friends for the $5,500 she was forced to pay for the sushi, as well as punitive damages for the pain and suffering she experienced that day. Frankly, I thought she should have pushed for way more in damages. A little while later, Izzy and her husband divorced. Neither of them were determined to be capable parents, so their child was taken in by a relative. As for the rest of Izzy's mommy gang, they all met similar fates. Getting divorced by their husbands, or disowned by their families. <laughs> I'll bet all of them are going to be regretting following Izzy's lead for the rest of their lives. So it seems like now, the neighborhood will finally get some relief from their malicious hijinks. Thank God. <laughs>